When they arrived at the office, Sakrup and his team were standing a cautious distance away. What do you have, second? This, shipmaster. He indicated a thick smear of red fluid on the window. Human blood is red, isn't it? I believe it is. Zed eased up to the window and looked inside. The probable blood was on the inside of the window, and there was a broken empty bottle and papers strewn everywhere. There was also blood in spots on the floor of the office. No body though. The victim had been carted off elsewhere. Is this evidence enough, shipmaster? One of the guards begged. Unfortunately, no. Zedbit faced him. This could be anything. We need to be able to offer a professional report. Sakrup, did you find the way into the station? There is an access way over there, on that wall. Off we go then. Zedbit didn't wait for them. After some anxious stamping of their jumping legs, the group obeyed. The ringed structure of the station made itself immediately apparent when they opened the door. Instead of a passage leading into the heart of the station, it led left and right, plain and open, until the curvature cut it off from view. The only thing of note were the scars from the gravity refit. The lights and floor plates were shifted a quarter way around from the spin-induced orientation. Sakrip, you go left. I'll take right. There should be passageways into the central shaft somewhere along the way. Remember to keep the comms open. Report everything. They split up. The passageway was efficiently clean and clear. No ambush spots. Zedbit was relieved. He wished he had the security hardware that he enjoyed in the military service. A video link between the teams would be so valuable right now. But, civilian life rarely involved military risks. So, fancy hardware like that was an unjustified cost. Audio would have to do if he ever had anything to report. Sakrup's team found something first. Ship leader, we found what looks like a human skeleton. It's hung off the wall like a trophy. What could have done this? Trixians. Stop the species as talk, second. Evidence, not accusations. Now, what do you see? Apologies, ship leader. It looks to be a full-sized human, stripped of flesh and mounted on the passage wall. It's, it's grotesque. Anything else? No ship leader. Whatever happened, it happened elsewhere. There's no blood or shell fragments. Do humans even have shells? No. They have a soft covering called skin, holding everything in. Well, none of that either. Acknowledged. Keep going. We haven't run into anything yet. Zedbit led his team on. There had to be an interior access passageway eventually, and it didn't take much longer to find it. This was the first passage that lacked the clinical cleanliness of the first ring. Small pieces of paper debris were scattered around along the edges of the floor, along the stairway that led to the center of the station. As Zedbid looked down the hall, he noticed this was the first one where the lights weren't working properly. Every other fixture was dark, and the ones that were lit, were showing emergency orange instead of the human standard bluish-white. Second. We have found one of the connecting passages. Emergency lights are active, and signs of looting are evident on the floor, proceeding towards the center. Acknowledged, ship leader. We have found one as well. Lights are the same. No debris though. We are proceeding also. Zedbit motioned for his team to move down the passage. As they slowly edged down the alternating dark and dim sections of the passage, the stillness kept them on edge. This place should be bustling with life. It felt longer than the 50 meters, the earlier scans had told him, lay between the rings. 
At the far end, Zedbit saw the first signs of life. Shapes flicked across the window and the bulkhead door that sealed the next ring. Too fast to be identifiable, but headed towards where Sekrup's team would come out. Sekrup, be careful. There is a group of something headed your way. Too fast for identification. We are still in the connecting passage. We'll try to avoid contact. Zedbit had reached a viewing port on the hatch and moved back and forth across it, trying to get a good field of view through the distorting glass. It was obviously meant to be looked through from the other way. All he could tell was that the new ring was oriented a quarter turn from this one. Entering would be tricky. Fortunately, the door controls were not locked down. A touch to the icon that showed an open hatch activated a motor that unlocked the braces and pulled the barrier away and to the side. They were through. Zedbit was right about switching from one path to the next. He nearly hit his head on the frame when gravity changed direction as he stuck his head through. The new ring was still oriented for simulated gravity. Must have been too hard to adapt this one. Clumsily, they all hauled themselves through. No more groups of things came along fortunately. They would have been in an awkward place to defend themselves. From the point of view of the new ring, they were coming up from the floor. The passage curved up into the ceiling, instead of around the center of the station. Many doors lined both sides of the passage. Once the whole group had climbed up, he closed the hatch and pointed towards the direction the group of beings had run and he knew his other team to be. He gestured for the team to gather close. We are not alone. Be silent and extra vigilant now. The group indicated assent and moved out. Sakrip, we have access to second ring. Be cautious of the change in gravity orientation. He whispered into his communicator. Two taps to the mic in reply marked his second's acknowledgement. This ring looked to be housing. The doors were marked with icons, names, numbers. He couldn't tell. These also had lights that were not operating properly. Some were unlit, others showed emergency orange, others showed purple. A medical alert. Thankfully, the main passage lights were back to the standard color and strength. No shadows from which they could be ambushed. As they passed, Zedbit noticed that the doors with the colored lights all had bowls of food rations, and some also had eviscerated plant fruits. He gently poked the tough shell. Odd. In the bowls, the food rations were wrapped in waxy paper that matched what he had seen in the previous passage. Carefully, he pulled one out. Unwrapping it seemed unnaturally loud in the silent corridor. He gingerly took a small taste. Potent. It was a concentrated emergency ration. He allowed the more curious of the squad to take one. But only one. Food this potent could cause issues in large amounts. Slipping the ration into his weapon belt, he beckoned the team onward. He was tempted to alert Sekrup, but kept silent. It didn't seem to be harmful, and the risk of detection was too great. Sakrup broke the silence for him. Ship leader, we have found an elevator that leads up to the next ring. We are taking it. Wait. We are almost to you. He led his team into a scurry. I can see you. But the doors were closing by themselves. He could see Sekrup looking around, trying to see how to stop the operation, but they sealed shut between the groups. They were trapped and going to the Queen only knows where. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description.